Hey everyone, thank you for listening to another episode of Spoiler Force Podcast. You can find all episodes on any podcasting platform like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, and watch episodes on YouTube. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and make sure to follow Spoiler Force on all social media platforms at Spoiler Force Podcast. This is Brian Donovan, and you're listening to Spoiler Force Podcast. Leaf Hurricane! All right, so this is episode 117 of Spoiler Force Podcast. My name is Ricky, and thank you for tuning in. This week's guest is someone that I was not expecting to get. I just took this on a whim, and uh, I have Brian Donovan with me, the voice of Rock Lee and Davis from Digimon. Um, I, I, I still, I, I'm still really like in in awe and like in shock that you even replied, especially on Instagram. I, I would have never thought that I'd get a response from you um but yeah like we were saying earlier man uh shout out to uh to uh michael yershek for for uh recommending you i i you know having him on the podcast just learning Thanks, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, michael. uh yeah man i mean michael yershek's awesome and uh so are you ricky man thanks for having me i really appreciate it and yeah I, look i am uh i believe in dreams you know and i believe in in you know, you, you can always ask kind of thing. Right. And, you know, and a lot of times we get no's, we get rejection, et cetera, but every once in a while, <laughs> you know, uh, dreams come true or, or things come true that we want and need. And, but you just got to ask, yeah, at least ask, you know, they say ask for the moon, worst that can happen is, uh, they say no. So, um, but no, awesome, man. And I'm really, uh, happy to be on spoiler force and, and I uh, really appreciate you reaching out and taking time and, and you know, to all your fans and listeners. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching Digimon and Naruto and, and digging old bushy brows like I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, just on the topic of Rock Lee, man, like, for the fans who don't know, how did you land that role? Because Rock Lee is, like, an essential character in the Naruto series. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I was doing Digimon. Um, and I did the second season of Digimon as Davis, uh, and it was already a big hit. So I came in, um, you know, hoping not to blow it because <laughs> I literally <laughs> got the on past to me or the goggles. And so I was doing that and it went really well. And then when the team, that same team um, went on to do Naruto. So a lot of them, not all of them, but some of them did. And uh, they thought of me because of the job I did on Digimon. So they said, hey. We're having a really hard time casting this guy, Rock Lee, old Bushy Bows. Um, he's really interesting. You know, he doesn't have any contractions. He talks really proper. But then he does these crazy emotional outbursts, which is Rock Lee. <laughs> you know, he personifies all of that. Um, you know, do you want to swing at it? And I was like, yeah. So I went in, like a traditional audition, went to the studio. They gave me the sides of the audition script material. And I just did what I thought I should do um, for him. And they loved it. And then I went to a callback. Uh, they sent it to Japan and the producers and the, you know, the creators to kind of okay it. Um, and I guess they did because I got the gig. Uh, and that was, whoo uh 2005, six, something like that. I mean, it's been almost 15 years, 16 years, I think. So pretty yeah. crazy um really crazy and none of us knew i mean i'm sure michael said the same thing but none of us knew it would have this crazy run um of you know 800 episodes or 720 or whatever it is and then um and then it just go on you know i got rock lee and his ninja pals and then now there's boruto and, yes um yeah it's it's amazing you know and what's really cool and i'm sure you know this ricky or some of your fans do but um you know when it got on netflix during that pandemic now there's this whole new wave of fans. Um, so I would say anime in general, but certainly Naruto is at an apex. You know, it's 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 more popular than ever before. There's more fans than ever before. And um, so that's been, it's been <laughs> pretty wild to say the least. It is insane to see how far Naruto has come because I remember watching Naruto on uh, burned CDs. My uncles used to be able to do that and right, we watch right. the subtitles through that and we'd have to wait for like for it to drop online somewhere on some random site for them to 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 take it and to earn it and we can watch it. But you know, you voicing Rock Lee though, you're pretty much growing with him through from the Naruto series, through all like even his own mini series that he had. 
yeah. up until Boruto, man. How does that feel? Just being that character all this time? Nah, dude, it's amazing. I mean, it's I mean, for an actor, it's like the dream come true because you know, for most actors and most of our parts, um, we, you know, we we uh, we come and go. You know, I mean, it's like you have this little part, or you have this, you know. I mean, unless you get a series like like Naruto, where it does, you know, it's like over years and years, like The Simpsons. I mean, there's a few right that have just lasted long time. Um, but yeah, again, I mean, I had no idea it was going to do that. Um, but it really is a treat for an actor to be able to kind of grow up with your character and to go through all of these, these changes and these, this evolution, right. Or just this maturity and growth. Cause you know, as when we started Rock Lee, he was a kid and you know, when we ended, he was an adult and he's got a kid metal Lee now. And, yeah. <laughs> oh, and then of course your own life, my own personal life um things were really going on too you know i mean because it lasted 15 years of recording kind of spread out um you know i i lost my sister i lost my dad and i got married i had kids i bought a house you know like i mean so your life is is running like this parallel if you will with your characters where all these changes are happening and not happening what's crazy is they're not happening um the same i mean often you know i'd go to the studio and i'd have to be super exuberant and crazy and passionate and emotional for rock lee but, you know, in my own personal life, you know, for instance, like my sister and my dad passed away, you know, that's kind of why you get paid to act. You got to be able to, when they say action or an anime, beep, 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 you got to be, you got to be ready to, to, to bring it. Um, and then of course the other is like, you know, I'd go to the studio and Rock Lee would be going through something like after the tuning exams and getting his ass whooped, <laughs> you know, um, you know, he was all depressed and down and out and insecure and, and, and not even sure if he would continue, right? And going through all that. But I might go to the studio super happy and exude, you know, I might be the opposite. I might be like, woo, life is grand. I just had a kid or, you know, whatever. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's sometimes they run parallel. Sometimes, you know, they fight each other and you gotta, you gotta, you know, as an actor, you gotta, you know, you gotta pull stuff from deep inside and make it happen. But it's been amazing, you know? And, and I think all the actors on the show would say the same. I mean, it's been a treat to be on a show that's so loved and for so long and a character that's so loved. Uh, one of the things I love about Rock Lee is all that he represents, you know, he, he represents never giving up, you know, and hard work and being the underdog and, and persevering and, and, and becoming his best self at every stage. He was always trying to get stronger and better. And, um, you know, he never gave up, uh, which is phenomenal. Um, and he also leads with a pure heart, you know, for anybody that doesn't know the show, like he represents, you know, all of those things and, and leading with a pure heart and loyalty and, and passion. And, you know, and these are all things I think that we all have to summon sometimes in our lives, right? Because life can be hard and we can get knocked around and we can have disappointments or frustrations or failures. And, and Rock Lee represents getting back on your feet. You know, like one of his famous quotes is, you know, always remember a hero is not one who never falls. They're the one who get up again and again never losing sight of their dreams, you know, and, and that's Rock Lee. Um, and that's a great quote. It's something, it's a real awesome mantra to live by, you know? Anyway, that was a quick, uh, a short question and a long answer. <laughs> no, I enjoy it. I, I love hearing your experience because, you know, you carry a part of Rock Lee in you since you've been, been this character for so long. So I, of course, his, the, the characteristics of this character would rub off on you as well. And, and for me too, man, like Rock Lee, you know, seeing him struggle in this show and, you know, everyone conning him out because he couldn't do like ninjutsu or, or genjutsu. And uh, I, I really relate to just Rock Lee's character when it comes to like, when you see everyone else that can do something that you can't. And then when you yeah. finally step up to the plate, people can finally see the hard work you put in. And so like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. no, you're absolutely right. And that's why, you know, he's so easy to, to love, at least for me to play him because you know, that's exactly right. I think, I think a lot of the fans respond to him because of that, you know, um, none of us have it all going on at the same time. And there's a few people that are rock stars. They come out of the womb and they're like, woo, and they're popular and they're strong and they're good looking or whatever, you know, they got the whole package, but that's, you know, that's, that's, that's the minority. I mean, that's a very small percentage of the population. The rest of us are like, you know, fighting for what we need and got and, and trying so hard and working so hard to get those things. Um, and so I think he's really relatable that way. You know, he doesn't have all these natural gifts. He's got to work for everything he has. Um, and that's like most of us, we got to work for everything we have. Um, and, you know, I don't want to say fight for everything we have, because that could be 
misinterpret it. You know, I don't want people to go out there and, you know, you know, and fight for the last toilet paper, but, but yeah, I mean, metaphorically, you know, I think, um, you know, yeah, we got to work really hard to, to get the things that we want. And I say that all the time. I mean, I'm very fortunate because I speak to um, students a lot, um, you know, in middle schools and high schools. And, and, and I always say, I'm like, dreams come true because you do the work. Like you don't, like, there's a few people that are magic wand and like, poof, they get the dream come true. But mostly it's a lot of hard work. And, and you have to realize that if you have a dream or a goal, um, you, you, you have to realize that it's going to be a lot of hard work. And if you're not willing to do the hard work, then you'd better ditch the dream or the goal because you ultimately it's just going to be frustrating and, and depressing because you, it's never going to happen. Um, you know, uh, and then, you know, take a leap, like reaching out to me on Instagram, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, know you, you just got to throw spaghetti against the wall and see what sticks. And, and, uh, you know, and that's, that's, that's awesome too, but you got to do the work. Um, you know, I'm sure even you could relate to that setting up, you know, spoiler force podcast, you know, in the beginning, you know, this idea, this dream, this goal, but you know, it's like building blocks, right? It doesn't happen overnight. It takes a while, like, you know, get in the groove and get good at it. And then, you know, getting, you know, better and better guests or whatever. Um, that takes time and effort. Uh, you got to get off the couch as they, as I like to say, there's a great quote, you know, what's, what's, this, what's the difference between a genius and a couch potato? The genius got off the couch. You know, we all are genius. We all have something to offer. And I don't mean genius by like Einstein means like, you know, bursting brains. I just mean that we all have something to offer. That's our genius. You know, we all have this individual talent or gift that we can offer the world. And so, yeah, you got to get off the couch. You got to do the work to make it come true. What was your thoughts on just seeing like Rock Lee when he finally shows his skills? Like, I'm pretty sure you've been asked this before, but the fight scene between him and Gara is one of the most iconic fight scenes ever. And yeah. literally, like before I was, before I sat down on my desk, desk here, I was watching a clip of that fight on Facebook. So, <laughs> nice. I, was, so I was, it just happened to come by, like, you know, coincidentally, I was like, all right, I, I'm talking to Rock Lee today, might as well just watch this little clip here. And, I, you know, what, what was going through your mind seeing the animation and just seeing how Rock Lee fights? Yeah, you know, it was special. Um, even walking in the studio, like I said, you know, we don't know. We don't get the scripts in advance. You know, when we walk into the studio, it's all a surprise to us too. You know, we get handed the size, the script. And then as we go, we're, we're kind of learning storyline, plot line. The director is telling us like what's going on and where, because sometimes you might not have been at the studio. I mean, except for Naruto, who's in every scene almost. <laughs> you know, I mean, for us, you know, otherwise like Rock Lee, you know, weeks could go by, you know, and I haven't been in the studio. So I don't really know what's going on. I don't know what the other storylines and why we're even here. What's, you know. So the director, you got to rely heavily on the director to kind of fill you in. And when we got, when I got to the studio that day, I, I'll never forget it. Mary Elizabeth, the director, she's like, oh my God, wait till you see what's happening today. And I was like, I was a fan. I was an audience member for the first half hour of my studio session because I was just like, holy, you know, blew me away. And it was beautiful. Um, the storyline was, was ridiculously amazing. Um, you know, and just the dynamic between uh, Rockley's inner dialogue, um, him, you know, not, you know, knowing he can't open these gates, but then, you know, guy says, yeah, you know, I mean, like all of this stuff going on. And then, of course, the iconic, you know, dropping of the weights um, and just how amazing that was. And even even in the animation, you know, just like, you know, and the whole, you know, the whole dojo, you know, whatever this, you know, stadium like rocks and um, like just yeah amazing man and it really is it's like it's fun to be a part of something that iconic you know i mean i think it's still ranked in one of the top 10 anime fights of all time um you know and i think too and i don't know if everybody would agree with me but i, I certainly know that there's a handful that do like i think not only did the tuning exam and that fight with gara um you know, shock, you know, fans as they're watching the show. And that happens pretty early on, given that there's 720 episodes. I think it was 40, episode 48 and 49. So pretty early on. And I think most people, not only did they go, oh my God, the storyline with Rock Lee and like how he fights and all this, but I think it also tipped the show. Like, I think from that point on, like if you were on the fence about Naruto and, and the show, or I think from that point on, it like it tipped, you know, it was like, holy mackerel. Like, I think for a lot of fans, that's when like they were hooked, you know, it was like, wow, not only for Rock Lee, because I think, you know, Rock Lee's tough to love early on. He's super like, ah, you know, super in your face. <laughs> 
I think, you know, early on, you either love him or hate him. But I think once that fight happened with Gara, like, he won a lot of people over, you know, from that moment on. And, and again, I think the whole show in general, like, I think it was just so iconic that, uh, yeah, anybody riding the fence was like, all right, I'm, I'm in, man. Let's, let's, you know, let's watch Naruto. Like, this is insane, you know. Uh, but super fun. Uh, and, you know, and, and the Gara characters ridiculously cool too, you know, I mean, fighting sand, like, like what, yeah, how do you, how do you win that? You can't, you know. I think any scene that Rock Lee is in, he's always like stealing the show. Um, even in the movies, you know, like uh, the third movie where they go to the, the moon, the island there and he, and his fight scene. And I, I, that was such a memorable, memorable, like, like scene to watch just him uh taking apart his bow staff to the chains jumping around and like his eyes ignite with fire or like yeah. his his fight with a uh, kimimaru the guy with the bone uh ability yeah, yeah drunken fist amazing but what was your thoughts on that just i, I don't know if the english I, I i can't recall but i i know that like there's certain guidelines that you like they couldn't exactly say that he was drunk but yeah, you could no, yeah, yeah yeah you're absolutely right so you know for your audience um we we had to do and it didn't happen like every session but often we would have to do uh you know the original version like drunken fist for that particular scene because you know broccoli basically drinks a bunch of sake and he's drunk and so he fights and he's very you know you, it's, it's <laughs> but because it was broadcast and for the kids um often we would have to do a broadcast version so the broadcast version for that was loopy fist so i i recorded drunken fist you know for the internet and whatever else the original and then for the stuff that they actually broadcast um on tv it's it's called loopy fist and it's called and it was medicine it wasn't it wasn't sake you know <laughs> i wasn't drunk i was just i took some medicine so you know kind of ridiculous um and yeah, actually, really ridiculous because I, I hated recording the the alt versions, but um, <laughs> but you know it, it is what it is. And yeah, so yeah, to your point, sometimes we had to just kind of do a, a, a kid friendly version, uh, you know. And you couldn't, you know. I think there was stuff like kill and you know murder or whatever, you know. There was like other or he died, you know. You'd have to change, you know. Um, I don't remember. I really remember uh, any others besides drunken fist. Um, verbatim but yeah that was that's as good example as any you know drunken fist to loopy fist if you want to start your own podcast like spoiler force then sign up with buzzsprout buzzsprout has helped hundreds of thousands of users like me to begin their podcasting journey with easy to use tools you can effectively get your podcast into different platforms like apple Podcasts, spotify amazon iHeartRadio, and more you can view your stats create audio clips and even have your own podcasting website buzzsprout offers ideas tips tricks and tutorials to help you improve your podcast follow the link below and once you sign up you'll get a 20 dollars amazon gift card this will let buzzsprout know that i sent you and will also support spoiler force podcast if you want a simpler way to record both video and audio for your podcast then sign up with Streamyard. Streamyard is the perfect program to create podcasts host live streams and even do video calls there are many tools that can help you create and design your own personal studio you can screen share read live comments, and stream to different destinations like Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. You can also download your video and audio once you're done with your recording session. Follow the link below, and once you sign up with the basic or pro plan, you'll earn a $10 credit to use for StreamYard. Happy podcasting. You mentioned that the, the broadcast, you know, a lot of kids watch it. And, and just to kind of like piggyback off what you said there, you know, with Digimon, that was something that I grew up with as a kid. And, oh, nice. Uh, um, watching like the first season and then you know with the second season with davis how I, I i really loved how they incorporated all the characters though it wasn't like a new set of kids and their their own adventure they still went back and tied yeah. in the first the first set of kids and then you know with the movies with digimon like you see them grow up to be like college kids very similar to naruto you know like yeah. like a lot of people my age we all grow up with these kids uh, with these kids on the tv show when we grow up as adults they're all adults too and and I don't know if you I don't know if you can talk about this, but I, I've seen photos of like a potential Digimon movie with Davis in it being a, like a young adult. Um, have you seen anything of that? Yeah, uh, there is murmur. I can't I can't really confirm, and not because I I've signed an NDA or anything like right. that. I mean, we don't you know often like I don't even know who Metal Lee's mom is. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't 
don't know who I ended up with. You know, and they never told us. Um, you know, so often, you know, I think the fans think we we got the inside scoop. I mean, I to some degree we do if we're recording a show because you know we we record and then it takes you know months. Uh, for that particular episode to come out. So sometimes we're privy to information that fans don't have. But for something like that, um, I don't know. I, I can only read the fan, you know, the fan gossip and rumor too, um, yeah. or, or anime news um, and go, oh, I have heard that rumor. I have heard that that's potential. Um, but I, I have not been hired. I have not been solicited to, you know, hey, are you available to record <laughs> this? Um, but I hope so. I mean, I, you know, I love Davis and, you know, I did Tony, uh, you know, Tony Goodman from Flint the Time Detective before that. That was my first anime property. And that was like, you know, a little more obscure. No one really knows it. But um, and so, you know, that was my first one. But it wasn't until Davis and Digimon that I was like, you know, that was my first iconic, awesome, fun character that I really related to. And, and again, like Rock Lee, he's got some really cool, great qualities um, that I'm proud of as, as to represent, you know, as an actor. Um you know, because I, you know, some, some, you know, I was talking to another anime voice guy, actor, and um, I, I won't say his name, you know, just because I don't know if he wants me to share this, but, you know, he's a little bummed because a lot of his, you know, really well-known characters are not nice, you know, they're really kind of the toxic representation of society, you know, just really evil, you know, they don't represent anything redeeming or good. And he said it's hard because, you know, he's not that guy, you know, as a human being, he wants to represent, you know, nicer, more positive um, stuff. And so he really struggles with the fact that his three main iconic characters are all like <laughs> evil, you know, awful. And I feel really lucky because my two most iconic characters, um, Rock Lee and Davis, you know, I think represent a lot of the great things, you know, that we all strive to be, you know, loyal and, and, you know, again, never giving up and perseverance and hard work and believing in yourself. Even if you doubt yourself, you still try, you know, you're still trying to be your best self um, and just never giving up, um, you know, and leading with a pure heart. I mean, they both did, you know, Davis and Rock Lee, if you say nothing else about them, whether you like them or not, they lead with a pure heart, you know, they're very passionate about their endeavors and, and um and that's pretty cool you know pretty cool have you ever played any villains before i i don't i like just based off your voice i don't know if i could like not say not believe but to hear your voice as a villain would be a very unique take <laughs> yeah you know i can do the villain laugh you know like i'm you know whatever like that <laughs> i'll get you you know whatever and we can all do it um i haven't played a lot of villains though to answer your question i have done a few um on camera like as an on-camera actor um you know i was kind of a, i was in 90210 and and you know they thought i was stalking Tory spelling and i played <laughs> uh, like i used to play kind of like a kind of like the kind of i don't know i mean like the long-haired you know bad boy guy um when i was younger so i do you know i do have a few of those under my belt and on my resume um but no actually uh in animation an anime uh no, not not anyone. Like I do, like little, uh, like little one-liners or two-liners. Because a lot of times when you're in a session, you'll do Walla for other little sub characters. And um, but uh, but no, nothing, nothing like you know the Steve Blooms and the you know, <laughs> these more uh, you know prolific actors uh, that have such a a range. You know, I mean, what I do, I do very well. And, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not known to do the villain, the villain guy, the villain voice, you know. No, I think, I, like I said, I think it'd be a very unique take to hear, like, you know, if there was ever a, an alternate story or timeline where Rock Lee becomes a villain or joins the Akatsuki, <laughs> I think that'd be a very interesting take, you know, like, everyone's gonna learn the springtime of you or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's true. I mean, it would be interesting storyline, like to 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 have broccoli flip, you know, because that happens a lot in anime, as you know, you know, um, or the dark side, you know, the playing the opposite, you know, where, um, you know, a lot of them, including Naruto, fighting, you know, the 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 dark side uh within him and um you know so yeah that would be pretty cool uh, i don't know if it's gonna happen rock lee uh i doubt it at this point um but yeah maybe at some point i'll score the villain and and you know <laughs> see what happens i i've been very blessed to have you on this show today brian 
And uh, I, I I know with your limited time, I do want I do want to have some of these fan questions here answered for yeah, them sure. before we wrap things up here. So um, so the first question here I have is from uh, Sang Lore. He's he asks um, you know, what was your thoughts when like Naruto or even Sasuke started emulating Rock Lee's moves in the tuning exams? <laughs> well, you know, look, it, it's it's flattering, right? You know, any anytime someone imitates you in real life or even anime and animation, um, yeah, it's flattering. It was it was awesome, and and I think you know, I think uh, certainly you know Sasuke and Naruto and and Ten Ten and you know, I think they they all appreciated Rock Lee on a level and recognized his passion and his efforts to be his best self, and and so yeah, I mean that's. Flattery is everything. I mean, that is the, the, the whatever, what, what's that saying? The, the surest form of compliment or the purest form of compliment. And, um, but yeah, you know, it, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a kick, you know, especially because they have all these other talents, you know, and, and to rely on a, a Rock Lee move. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that says something. Yeah, great question. Thanks. All right. So uh, the, the second question here, uh, let's see, uh, it's from, uh, from Bobby. He asks, you know, uh, do you think that Lee only had Taiju? Uh, if Taijutsu was the only thing that made him stronger, do you think that also hindered him too? Um. Yeah. I mean, I, certainly early on. I mean, that's the storyline, right? You know, it's like he's limited. He's limited. Um. You know, in that way. Um. But but I think because he was so singularly focused with the Taijutsu and the things that he could do, um, he excelled that way, right? Like I remember, like I took, you know. Um, uh, karate for a, for a time and I remember my sensei you know and this is in real life but I remember my sensei saying you know if you master one move um, you know you can beat almost everyone and anyone right so um, and I think that's kind of what happened with Rock Lee um, uh, you know he he was limited initially and that was a hindrance and a weakness you know perceived or otherwise um, but then once he realized that, okay, this is all I got. And through obviously Mike guys, um, you know, tutelage, uh, he, he became the best at that. Um, and so, yeah, and, and surprised everyone, even including himself at every turn. Right. So <clears throat> I think that says a lot, you know, it says a lot. And it's also a great, uh, reminder to all of us, you know, we work with what we have, the gifts that we have, you know, if you spend your whole life wishing you were someone else or trying to be someone else, it's a wasted life. Um, you know, you have to, at, one, at some point, you got to wake up and, and recognize that I am who I am. I'm going to work with what I got, and then I'm going to be my best self. And I think that's, you know, the, the beauty and brilliance of, of Rock Lee. Beautifully said. I, I agree with that 100%. You know, I, I you know, again, with this whole podcasting thing is just, when when you see other people who do well with their platforms and stuff, you you tend to you know be envious at times. But you got to just like focus on yourself, like you said, just be like Rock Lee and just stay passionate. And I I really appreciate what you just said there. Um, and this last question here is from yeah. Van Brooks. Uh, I don't know if you know this. There was like a viral, like not meme, but like a viral post that went around. And so uh, the the question is, you know, if Rock Lee had the Byakugan. Could he beat Shikamaru with with the showering gun? Oh wow! I didn't see the meme, uh, so I'm kind of going. I, you know, I, uh, <laughs> you know say? <laughs> having not seen it, I'm going to say yes. That's my answer. <laughs> yes, he could. Um, yeah, I mean, but Shikamaru is uh, Tom. Uh, Tom Gibbs is a friend of mine. We've done a few cons together now, and and he's he's awesome. So I will say that on the sidelines. But yeah, my answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and, and 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 right. I mean, that's you know, not only is it just funny for me to say yes, but I would also say that Rock Lee would say yes, right? Because he says yes to everything. Like he, you know, there's almost like a ignorance is bliss or a blind faith that you know. I can win. I can beat anybody and everyone. And, and again, there's this, this, this gallant um, A for effort that he carries with him every minute of every day. Um, like he just goes in with, I'm going to, I'm going to try my best and I'm going to do it. And he believes in himself that way. And it, it might be very ignorant and he might get his butt whooped. Um, but he goes in with, you know, full, full speed ahead with everything he has, you know? And I think again, 
a wonderful quality, not always a wonderful quality, because you have to be <laughs> careful in real life, you know, just jumping in or I can stop that car with my bare hand, you know, and of course not. But, but, you know, but I also think if you go in with everything you got and you give it your best uh, effort and, and you're all, then yeah, I mean, that's all we can ever do, right? We, you know, there's that saying, right? Leave the jersey on the field. It's like, give it everything you got. And whatever happens, happens. If you win, great. If you lose, it's okay. You know, you do better the next time. Um, but yeah, great questions. And, and again, thank you, uh, Ricky, for having me. Um, thank you so much for taking the time. And uh, yeah, man, look, you got to be your most authentic self. And, and your podcast or otherwise will grow organically and exactly the way it should, you know, because if we spend too much time, you know, comparing our, our, our posts with that other post, they got more likes than I did or whatever. It's like, oh man, what a wasted, awful energy in the world. You know, who cares? You know, I think we do what we can with what we got and, uh, and the rest will happen naturally and organically the way it should. Right. I believe in that 100%. So, you know, I, I, I yeah, I, I've come to just learn to just agree to come to terms and agree with what I'm doing right now and just to stay focused on myself. So, you know, what you said is, is a great reminder. Um, you know, Brian, before we do end this episode, how can folks reach you if they want to follow your content? Oh yeah. You know, look, I'm an old fart. I'm not on TikTok yet. So I apologize <laughs> to everyone because I know anybody under 30 is on TikTok. Um, so I'm not on that yet. Maybe someday um, you can find me on Instagram. Like you found me. So you can post it for your fans, but it's Brian Donovan underscore one. You'll see me holding one of my babies um, in my arms is my my photo. Um, and you'll very quickly see the, my, my little feed that sprinkles Rock Lee in there. Um, <laughs> it's not just a Rock Lee Naruto feed. It's a little bit of everything. I'm also a huge disability advocate um, for various reasons. But uh, so I sprinkle a lot of that in there too. But yeah, I mean, you know, uh, say hello or follow me if you want. Um, and thanks again to Errol, your your audience and your fans uh, for watching Digimon and Rock Lee, or even if you haven't seen those for spending a little time with me today and Ricky. So thanks guys. All right. Again, Brian, thank you so much for your time. I hope in the future, you know, we can do like a full length episode, but I really appreciate your time and I know you've been busy and uh, I know with the, with con season coming up, I know you're going to be busy with that too. So I really, again, I, I truly appreciate this. Yeah, of course, man. Where are you? I don't even know. Where, where, where are you? I recently relocated to uh grand Prairie, which is like South of Dallas. So oh, South of Dallas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, so look, uh, you know, I'm in Texas uh, more than any other state really. For <laughs> so, uh, and in fact, I was just in Dallas. I was in Allen, Texas, uh, for uh weebcon so maybe we'll run into each other live and uh and for anyone else listening hope to see you at a con soon and again thank you everyone to uh to who to those who uh, watch and listen to this episode uh, again make sure you guys follow brian on instagram i'll have that link in the description make sure you guys like share and subscribe to uh spoiler horse podcast if you enjoyed this episode help like it and share it and again this is episode 117 thank you guys so much and have a great day see you guys If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to give a review and rate Spoiler Force Podcast. If you want to get all Spoiler Force updates or even peeks at behind the scenes, you can join the Spoiler Force Discord community. And if you'd like to show support, give tips, recommendations, sponsorships, or any collaborations, you can email me at rickyvang92 at gmail.com.